what is FHA for? Why we want FHA loan? Why on earth someone want FHA? Anyone? Low down payment. Low down payment. Good job, Linda. Yes, because it's only required 3.5% down payment. There are more reasons to it, but the number one reason is the low down payment. In 1934, after the Great Depression, um, the government created, created this FHA loan program to encourage people to buy home, encourage people to become homeowners, to, uh, to also to help the economy at that time. Because the Great Depression occurred since 1929 to 1934. So many people had no job. Like the unemployment rate was from three percent to twenty-five percent. That's huge. What happened in uh, 2020 when we had the pandemic? Was it seventeen percent is the max the uh, unemployment rate? It was seventeen percent, right? That's huge already. Mm -hmm. But in the uh, in 1929 to 1934, unemployment rate was twenty-five percent. Almost everybody, like even attorney, had no job. I remember I took one uh, a history class in high school, and I, they saw a big job and, and attorney go and sell apple, you know, because they have no job, right? They have to find a way to make money. So, so that's why the, uh, the government came up with this program. Before that, there is no 30 year fix. Before that, always 20% down and only five, five arms, seven arms. Um, but in uh, 1934, when they created the FHA loan, they, they allowed the low, very low down payment, 3.5%, and um, they have 30-year fixed loan program so that people can stay long in the uh, mortgage and after 30 years, they pay it off. So this is a really great program. We're gonna go further uh, to see all the good thing about FHA loan. And, and, and at the end of the program, we wanna talk about if you have a buyer who have an FHA loan, how do you win other buyer? So in order to win the other offer, you need to know very well about the FHA loan so you can talk to the listing agent and so that listing agent can convince the seller. So you give them all the good stuff from FHA loan so you want to take notes, all the good thing about FHA loan so that you can go back. Whenever you have an FHA loan buyer, you can go back review what you take note today, and then you can talk to the listing agent. Hey, you know what? This is a good loan. Don't worry. My buyer love it, and they move forward. They're gonna, we're gonna close. And write your good offer, no contingency whatsoever, because your client have the pre-approval from us. There should be no contingency. Should be good, right? All right, so this for only owner occupied, meaning if you buy a property, you have to live in it. You can't just rent it out. Uh, if, okay, they said never mess with the government. When you buy a conventional loan and, and you, you, you claim you're gonna live in it and then you rent it out, you know, if lender found out, they just make you to pay it off, that's it. But you don't have any legal issue. But for FHA loan, you don't wanna mess it up. You tell your client, if you say you live in it, you live in it. Because at the moment they found out you uh, rent it, you might be, end up in jail because this is government guarantee loan okay uh, what does it mean by government guarantee loan mean meanings government doesn't give you the loan yeah. lender give you the loan but government guarantee to the lender if my if your borrowers didn't pay your mortgage you go ahead foreclose them whatever you lose like because when it foreclose when lender foreclose the property they have to hire attorney it costs them so much money they lose money and that when the government the federal housing uh, administration come in to pay for the loss because they insure the the loan that's what it is so this is a good loan it's good for one unit two unit three unit four unit and it's good for condo, townhouse, but condo had to be approved by FHA. That's the only thing that make it a little bit hard. So when somebody buy a condo, if they have an FHA loan, you have to make sure that, F, that that condo is approved by FHA. If the condo is not approved by FHA, don't even think about it because the loan mm -hmm. not gonna go through. So in that case, you can switch it into conventional loan. I had a situation where 
the client buying a condo with an FHA loan, 3.5% down. And then we we found out the condo is not approved by FHA. We switched it to conventional, conventional loan. loan. There is a conventional loan, 3% down payment for first time home buyer. So we fine. So we good, okay? So we just have to understand it and so we can switch thing around. Um, four units, three units, two units. You can live in one, still own or occupy, rent out the other units. Same at VA loan. So somebody buy a four units, 3.5% down, and of course, her income or his income have to qualify for a mortgage. And the four, when somebody buy a four unit, um, four unit property, the loan limit really high. So FHA loan have loan limits. VA loan is different. So if you didn't attend the VA loan last time, go back to the video two weeks, two weeks ago. We have two videos for VA loan. You want to go back there and, and, and review it. That's a good loan to learn too. So for FHA loan, there's a loan limit, a loan limit by county, okay? So Santa Clara County, the loan limit is 970,000. But that's for one unit property. I think the four unit property, I don't remember exactly the amount, but I think it's almost 1.8 million for the four unit property for loan amount, 1.8 million. For example, someone buying a $1.9 million uh, four units, they have uh, 100,000 down payment, they can borrow 1.8 million dollar loan. And, and that, of course, they have to qualify for the, the, the mortgage. And if they don't have enough income, what can we do? We can bring in co-borrower, right? Co-borrower. And they rent one, uh, they live in one unit, they rent out the other three, and the rental income from the other three unit can be used at rental income to qualify for the property that they buy. This is really, really good program, okay? Um, for low down payment uh, borrower or buyers. Okay, the next line we talk about, uh, no, 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 the, the line, the third line in this line. 80% loan to value for refinance cash out. We were talking about purchase loan, that 3.5% down payment. For refinance cash out, the maximum loan to value is 80%. What is loan to value? If you can be, uh, somebody knows, talk about it so somebody doesn't know and understand what loan to value. For example, if somebody owns a million dollar home, right? And the maximum loan amount that they can borrow when they cash out is 80% of a million is? Yes. 800,000. 800,000. 800,000 is 80% of a million. Mm -hmm. So for example, if this person own a home, have a 300,000, dollar uh, mortgage in the home that uh, now the home value is one million dollars he she he or she saw that oh i have so many equity let cash out and maximum cash out is 80 percent of the home value for example the the, the home value is one million at the time they she refinanced or he refinanced to cash out he can get out eight hundred thousand big loan amount pay off the three hundred thousand uh, so debt right? and bring home 500,000. This 500,000 is all your money when you bring home. You don't have to pay tax when you, because that's a loan. This is a loan. You pay more interest, but you don't have to pay tax. That's awesome, right? Um, that's the refinance cash out. 97.75% uh, LTV for a, a refinance written term. So somebody have a, a, a mortgage and want to refinance and that, into a refinance, uh, into FHA loan, the maximum loan to value is 97.75%. For example, if the home value is $1 million, but because Santa Clara County loan limit is 970, so they can refinance written term up to the loan amount of 970,000. Okay? All right, DTI 50%, debt to income ratio. Debt to income ratio, uh, this is one of the factors underwriter or lender look at the loan application to find out if they want to let uh, approve the loan or not. Normally, for conventional loan, DTI has to be below 50%, but for FHA loan, sometimes the DTI can go up to 55% and it is still approved.
but it depends on case by case. And it, we have to run it through DU, and if DU approve it, we got approved. But we don't know in which, because it's, it's really case by case, so we cannot list what kind of situation. But normally, it would work when you have a lot of uh, assets, like money in your bank account, okay? Or a low LTV. That's what works. But more than 50% DTIs work too. So the team, the mortgage team, if you see someone with over 50% DTI and if you run DU on FHA loan, if it approve, it's approved. Even when LP approval, sometimes 52% DTI also approve under LP approval. You have to run LP and DU when you do approval for people. Um, when you see that DTI at 50, 51, 52, 55% run DU and LP to see if they get approval. And play with the number, put in more asset, more money in the bank account, or lower the LTV. Those two factors will help you to approve the loan with the high DTI, mm -hmm. the, uh, D debt to income ratio. Remember that. Loan limits by county, we talk about it for finance property. So somebody um, buying a home uh, using a FHA loan, uh, because he, he or she want to buy a home to live in and if he or she already own three other properties and this is the fourth property that's still working they can still get the fourth property with the FHA loan if they have more than four they might not be able to get another uh, uh, home with FHA loan they might have to do a conventional loan because a conventional loan can go up to six or ten properties so just to let you know so FHA loan have 15 year fix, 30 year fix, and 5-1-R, okay? More flexible credit score and debt requirement. What does it mean? Anyone have anything to say when you see this? I want you to remember this. This is where you want to talk to your listing agent. FHA loan is easier to get qualified than conventional loan. It's more flexible. Credit score can be 580, that low. Um, the, you know, in the credit report, sometimes you see so many liens, like tax lien, all kind of liens. But sometimes, lender let you borrow it. They don't care about the liens. I saw that happening. Like so many tax liens in the credit report, lenders still lend the money for FHA loan. A lot easier than conventional loan, okay? So you talk to the other side, say, you know what, FHA loan is a very good loan. It's much easier to qualify for the borrower than the conventional loan. They may say, oh, because your client have low down payment, so what? They get a loan anyway. And as long as my offer is the best offer, higher, higher, uh, highest uh, pr uh, offer, no and clean, no contingency, then what's wrong with lo low down payment is not a problem because we're going to get a loan. My client going to move forward, going to close it. And it is very easy to get qualified and approval. That's what you're going to talk to them about. So Federal Housing Administration Insure FHA loan, we talked about it already. So talking about insurance, we talk about insurance, right? Insurance, but insurance, there's a premium we have to pay. So FHA loan, there is a mortgage insurance premium. For VA loan, there is no mortgage insurance. But for FHA loan, there is a mortgage insurance and and there is two mortgage insurance, okay? The first one is a monthly mortgage insurance that happens every month. But the second one is the upfront mortgage insurance. Upfront mortgage insurance is one-time pay at the time of purchase or the time of refinance, okay? Upfront mortgage insurance is 1.75% of the loan amount. This is a lot, but there is a way. Whenever I do FHA loan, I never make my client pay for the 1.75% MIP. Instead, I lock in the interest rate that the lender give enough credits to pay for 1.75% upfront MIP. Because FHA loan interest rate is lower than the conventional loan. So for example, if a conventional loan at that time is 3.875% rate, but the FHA loan is 3.5, so why don't you increase it to 3.875% and cover the MIP, upfront MIP, so the client don't feel like I have to pay higher rates. If they compare with conventional loan, it's the same rate and they don't have to pay MIP. If somebody say, no, 
you know what, I want to have lower rates. Okay, there are two options. Bring in the money to pay 1.75% or we can put that 1.75% into your loan amount. So now your loan amount is bigger, but you can take care of it. You don't have to pay it now. So there is a way. So never be afraid to talk to your client about this upfront MIP because we have a way to take care of it. For the monthly IP, we talk about it later. But I want one thing I want to remind everybody. When you do FHA loan, there is uh, this called MIP, Mortgage Insurance Premium. But when you do conventional loan, the client also have to pay the mortgage insurance, but it's called PMI. PMI, PMI means private mortgage insurance because conventional loan, the private company that sells this insurance to the buyer, not the government. So it's okay, pro, that, that's a different private mortgage insurance. This is mortgage insurance premium. Okay, that's a two different. Okay. In here, I put 625 score. Why? Even though the government said it's okay if you have a 585 score. I put 620 because whatever below 625 score will be very hard to get approval. Whatever below 620, it's going to be going through what's called, what called manual underwriting. Normally, whatever over 620 FICO score, it goes into a DU approval. This uh, desktop uh, uh, automatic underwriting system is much easier to get approval or not right then and then. But whoever have less than 620 FICO score, it, it would it run through the DU or the LP system. It doesn't work. So the underwriter have to look at it manually to find out if they approve the loan or not. And in that case, they would look at so many things and it's so many condition and most of the time it doesn't work okay so when you meet your client uh, for FHA loan um, ask them about your uh, their FICA score if they have low FICA score run the credit and help them to improve their score okay don't let them go question on the MIP did you say MIP is can be financed mm -hmm. on the FHA only the upfront sir yeah the upfront MIP Yes, yeah, only the upfront MIP can be financed okay. into the loan. So that means the loan is bigger. Yeah, the loan is bigger, but they get a better rate because you are... Yeah, yeah because okay. you don't have to get the credits. Okay. Yes, awesome. But the, but the because of your question, so the monthly MIP in uh, for FHA loan is only there. Yeah. We don't have the option to do lender pay MIP. Mm -hmm. There's no option. But for conventional loan, there is an option the lender pay for your mortgage insurance. That's conventional, but for uh, for FHA loan, there's no, no option to buy out the monthly mortgage insurance. So this table is showing you what is the mortgage insurance rate. So I'm gonna go over maybe just one or two lines because I don't want to go over everything. You can read it by yourself. So so this the first right here. Wow. The first, uh, the first section. There's two section, right? Uh, the first section, it's a 30-year fix, of the term over 15 years, and the below in the chart is 15 year or less. Uh, okay. So the first section, they say, if let let let, let look at one line at the top. You see, less than 90 percent, less than 90 percent LTV, meaning. Meaning what? Meaning down payment more than 10%. Look at that. You see the less than 90%, everybody see it? For, for some loan with less than 90% LTV, meaning have more than 10% down payment, mm -hmm. with the loan amount less than 625,500. Okay, you see the first row, the upfront MIP is 1.75%, but the monthly mortgage MIP is 80%. Okay, all right, um, and they said duration is 11 years because this person have more than 10% down so so they might only need to pay the mortgage insurance for 11 years but no one want to pay more insurance for 11 years. They will find a way to get out of uh, that mortgage insurance. insurance, okay? Remember, the maximum loan amount in the Santa Clara County for uh, FHA loan is 970000 So you look you look in the middle, uh, the upfront mortgage insurance, 
every number is the same, 1.75 across. Because upfront mortgage insurance is not changing, it's the same. But the monthly mortgage insurance ha is changing, if not the same. Look down on the 15-year uh, fixed loan or 5-1-arm loan at the bottom. Uh, you see for the less than 90% LTV, this one. For that, for this one, right? Um, but this person is applying for the 15-year fixed loan and have, for example, 11% down payment. The monthly mortgage insurance is only 0.45%. Okay, look, right underneath that, if somebody have less than 10% down payment, the LTV is more than 90%, the monthly mortgage insurance is 0.70%. So that means, um, you down when you have more down payment, your you monthly mortgage insurance is less, nice. right? And when you have low down payment, your mortgage insurance will be forever yeah. until you pay off your loan, right? But again, nobody want to uh, stay in paying the mortgage insurance for the rest of the loan uh, term. So they will find a way to refinance. So if you know someone that have a, a mortgage insurance right now, talk to them, ask them to come and do the refinance to get rid of it. Even though the rate is higher, but getting out, getting rid of the mortgage insurance still save the money, right? Because the mortgage insurance might be a lot. Okay. All right. What is this? Streamline refinance and simple refinance. Okay. Have you heard of Streamline refinance, Alex? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You got? Mm -hmm. Okay. Everybody should. So Streamline refinance is for people who already have an FHA loan okay they have an FHA loan now they refinance because they already have an FHA loan when they refinance again we we don't need appraisal report we don't need tax return we don't need W2 or 1099 we don't need paycheck stuff <coughs> Wow it's like a no doc loans basically no but no doc loans still ask you to do appraisal this one we don't need so what do we need to submit? We will need to submit a bank statement, uh, and we submit. Uh, we have to run the credit report, and at the very end before funding, then they will call the HR to verify verbal uh, VOE. That means verbal verification of employment. Okay. So also, if you look at this one, something really awesome right here. The upfront mortgage insurance is how much? One percent. Ah. 0.01 0 percent is like nothing, okay? And the MIP is 0.55 percent. So if you know someone that already own an FHA loan and you know, if, if you think that we can refinance written term for them to lower the interest rate, this is a good program. I remember, okay, and this is no cash out, only for lower the interest rate, okay? I remember one time, long, long ago, I do a refinance for one, client who do FHA loan. At that moment, if we look at her income, there's no way she qualified to refinance because she is she a business owner. And at that point, her business is really bad. She basically earned no money. But I was able to refinance for her using the Streamline program to lower her interest rate because she doesn't need to give me her tax return or whatever income to prove anything. All I need is just to run her credit and, and, and my lender verify she's still working there. That's so easy, I love it. So if you have a buyer, a, a client who already have FHA loan and their interest rate is so high and they say, oh, my income not qualified for a refinance, no bring them back here yeah. and do a re streamline refinance for them. Okay, so this is a good one. Who qualify for FHA loan? Anybody? Who qualify? The one have low income. No, <laughs> not low income. <coughs> you have to qualify for a mortgage. It's not low income. <coughs> Anyone qualify for FHA loan? Any if you buy the property for? For Oh no, occupy. So as long as you buy a home to live in, you qualify for a mortgage. Is that awesome? It's really good, right? Um, 
How to apply for an FHA loan? Where do we apply for an FHA loan, everybody? Mortgage company. Pacific Way. Pacific Way. <laughs> That's very easy. You go there and you ask people, you know where to apply for an FHA loan? They will say, what? Pacific Wise. We do FHA loan. We are pro. We know all about FHA loan. What else? You know, they can ask any question. We can answer all the questions. Okay? Credit requirement. Okay. Must provide credit report for a non-borrowing spouse. Okay. What is non-borrowing spouse? You don't know what it is, Alex or Helen or anybody here or people on the Zoom. What is non uh, borrowing spam? Non borrower, non borrowing spam. It's not on the. It's not on the loan. Not on the loan. Yeah. <laughs> so there are so many times people come to me and say, "We buying a home, but I only want my wife on the loan. Don't put me on the loan." Or Oh, oh, can you only put my husband on the loan? Do not put me on the loan. For many reasons, they prefer only one person on the loan, right? Because most of the time because of the credits, uh, but sometimes because of tax purposes, sometimes because of whatever reason they come up with. But for no, it's liability. Yeah, <laughs> but for conventional loan, it's okay. Okay, I don't want my husband or wife on the loan, only me. That's fine. We don't, need, we don't even need to run credit. We don't look at the, the other non-borrowing spouse document or paper or anything. We completely ignore the non-borrowing spouse. But for FHA loan, we have to run credit for the non-borrowing spouse. Lender do care about the non-borrowing spouse liabilities. Okay, but they just look at it. I remember there's one situation where both of them have so many debts, and of course we want to hire one. And when they asked us to provide the, the non-borrowing spouse credit report, we was like, really? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it might kill the deal, but they looked at it. They still let us pass. So it, they do look at it, but. I don't know how they come up with the DTI in that situation, but they let us uh, pass that loan. So when we do uh, FHA loan, we want to run credit report for both husband and wife at the very beginning, even though one person on the loan. Okay, processing team, run both. Okay, two traditional credit score are required. Uh, normally, we, ha we have three credit score, right? Mm. One from Trend Union. Trend Union, the other one from Equifax, and what else? Experience. Experience, <coughs> three of them. Um, but sometimes, I don't know, sometimes it only show two, but that's okay, that's okay. Cash out transaction, no mortgage late in the previous 12 months. If somebody applying for a purchase loan with FHA loan, it's okay to have one late mortgage payment within the past 12 months. But if they are cashing out the money, they refinance cash out, if they have one late payment, it's not working. Okay? 